Hello, I'm Dr. Lee. I like to use ultrasound as a guiding tool. The cervical area is one of the parts ultrasound contributes a lot in image guided pain practice. I have used ultrasound for the cervical periradicular steroid injection for 15 years. But there are many patients who still need interlaminar steroid injection or CM guided procedures. Cervical interlaminar injection is one of the major indications of CM guided procedures. At this video clip, I'm going to share the CM guided cervical interlaminar epidural steroid injection and I'm going to study basic cervical CM anatomy and how to manipulate the CM angle to optimize the view. Please keep subscribe and study with us. Let me describe my patient. He is 19 years old. He has had intermittent chronic posterior neck pain and now he has new symptom occurred one month ago. His pain occurred in right to scapular area, lateral arm and lateral form area. He also complains tingling sensation in the same area. He shows positive sign on spelling test. His simple x-ray shows mild foraminal stenosis at right C67 level due to oncovertebral hypertrophy. Midline sagittal T2 weighted in phase and water image shows focal protrusion of soft disc at C56 and C67 level. Right oblique sagittal image shows focal protruded disc at C56 foramen, not C67. Axial T2 weighted image at C56 level shows focal protruded disc narrowing of medial portion of right intervertebral foramen. Proper CM setting is crucial for successful intervention. Like lumbar spine, CM cranial, or caudal tilting is the first step of a CM setting. But before aligned end plate, true AP view to the spinal vertebra is essential. We should focus on the spine, not the patient's surface outlook. It's very important. To have a correct AP view, CM operator needs to manipulate the CM by tilting and rotation maneuver. I always use long forceps to avoid radiation injury to my hand and arm. You need to practice to use the long forceps because it's very awkward at the first time. But I strongly recommend you practice to use long forceps. After C arm setting, I select a target point and needle entry point. This is the sequence. First, identify the target interlaminar space. Second, my needle entry point is on the surface of lamina of one level below, not the interlaminar space. Third, push forward to the upper end of a laminar bone plate, not the interlaminar space. If I feel my needle went through enough or touch the bone, I have to stop and ask CM contralateral oblique rotation view. CM should be rotated enough to see the alignment of posterior inner surface of the lamina and watch the CM anatomy and needle and plan the needle trajectory. Let's review the oblique CM anatomy of the cervical spine, lamina of upper level and well delineated anterior surface, lamina shadow lower level and well delineated anterior surface, interlaminar space, pedicle, oncovertebral joint. Move the needle very slowly and carefully. 
if my needle tip passed the line between the inner line of adjacent lamina, I should do extra care and should not pass the dura layer. If I decide my needle past the facial layer, I connect with the contrast media and slowly infiltrate. Finally, contrast media injection. At this time, I need to stabilize the needle not to overpass the dura and injure the spinal cord. Contrast media should be very slowly infiltrated. After contrast injection under oblique view, I confirm the contrast pattern by AP view again. And finally, steroid injection. I have used the injectant mixture of local anesthetics and two ampoules of dexamethasone palmitate. Thank you for your attention.